Good morning, children. So we have completed, no? In chemistry, what are the chapters that we have covered so far? We have completed chemistry in everyday life, one chapter. Then second, we have completed coordination chemistry, and third one, we have completed polymers. Okay. So next week, you will be having exam. I said that I have told you from 22nd onwards, 22 to 27th, you will be having the exam as per the board exam pattern for 70 marks in chemistry. So in the for 70 marks, you will be having chemistry in everyday life, coordination chemistry, polymers, and four to one case I am going to teach you today is biomolecules. Okay? Under biomolecules, you will be having a full carbohydrates, up to carbohydrates. Next to carbohydrates, you will be having proteins. Okay, proteins don't want up to carbohydrates will be your question. Okay, so the question will be as per the board exam question for 70 months the questions will be asked. And sincerely do prepare and try to do the exam honestly in the presence of your parents. Okay, so it will be for 70 months. So the questions will be chemistry in everyday life, coordination chemistry, polymers and in biomolecules up to carbohydrates. Okay, this will be the questions for your First examination. This is the periodic assessment one. We do the periodic assessment one. The uh, board exam pattern for 70 marks. And now, today, we will start with a new chapter that is biomolecules. We are going to start with a new chapter. The chapter is for biomolecules. See again, in biomolecules, we expect four marks for the board examination. How many marks? For four marks, the questions will be asked from the row molecules. And in each examination, you can expect three to five questions. Three to five questions from the bio molecules. So it is one of the very, very, very important reading chapter as far as you are. Neat examination is concerned. Can you understand? For the neat examination is concerned, and it is a literally a uh, complicated chapter in order to write the structures. Okay, when you understand how to derive the structures, write the structures, then it will become very, very easy for you. Of your own, you need not memorize, of your own, you can draw or derive the structures. Okay, so biomolecules. So, what are these biomolecules? See, I have told you, chemistry is a wonderful subject, it's the easiest subject, first thing. And when you pursue chemistry in your higher studies, you have a bright future, that is the second thing. Under the chemistry, one branch is called as biochemistry. One branch of chemistry is called as biochemistry. So, biochemistry, biochemistry, like medical biochemistry, we have environmental biochemistry, we have soil biochemistry, we have the soil biochemistry is nothing but it is associated with agriculture sector. Then environmental biochemistry is related to the pollution and so on like that. And next one is medical biochemistry. The medical biochemistry is associated with all kinds of laboratory methods, laboratory procedures, the investigation, diagnostic procedures, everything. So if you pursue the biochemistry, medical biochemistry, then it will be very much helpful. Why? Because the doctors can give only the treatment that is the medical biochemist will know to assess will know only to diagnose, will be knowing to diagnose what is the positive nature and why this type of wall functioning has occurred inside the living organism. So the diagnostic method, say for example, the sugar level. Only biochemist can identify the sugar level, the creatinine urea, creatinine urea level, HD level, level of HD, blood cells, counting of blood cells, Counts. Isn't it? Then, toxication, heavy metal toxicity, we call toxication, toxication that is heavy metal toxicity. This heavy metal toxicity, biological magnification we use for. The heavy metal toxicity inside the cells or inside the tissues of the bodies. All these things will be associated with the biochemistry. All these things are associated with biochemistry. 
So that biochemistry plays a significant role in terms of chemistry. So biomolecules is nothing bad. It is a branch of chemistry that deals with the study of the chemical substance. That deals with the study of the chemical substance. What are those chemical substances? The chemical substances may be atoms or molecules which forms in combination which forms in combination giving the combination or integration giving rise to the structural structural formation of the living organism formation of the living organism structural formation of what structural formation of the living organism so that is called as biomolecules what are biomolecules biomolecules are nothing but it is a chemical substance what is a chemical substance it may be either an atom or a molecule which are in combination these atoms and the molecules they combine together which either break together and give rise to the formation of the structural development of the living organism so it forms the basis of the living organism say for example you take carbohydrate you take say for example you take carbohydrate you take proteins you take you take acid isn't it the protein is very 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 important for the living organism for the normal growth and the development for the normal balanced hormonal function inside the body. See, imagine if there is no normal growth, obviously it results in what a malfunctioning on the uh, cretinism. Cretinism, what is that? The cretinism is called dwarf nature. That will not be proper growth, isn't it? The body mass index we used to call. What is the body mass index? Body mass index. Body mass index is determined by the protein content in the body. So protein metabolism. So the body mass index is nothing but what the weight of the body should be equal to that of the height. Should be equal to that of height, isn't it? So more or less it should be in right proportion or otherwise in definite proportion. Then the person has got an appropriate body mass index. So for attaining this appropriate body mass index, this protein plays a significant role. This carbohydrates is very very important. Why? Because the carbohydrates are responsible for energy. For producing what? Energy. Without energy, the living organisms cannot work. So the energy. The nucleic acids. The nucleic acids are ribosomal. DNA and RNA. This DNA and RNA is very very important for the transmission of the genetic characters. Isn't that transmission of the genetic characters? Transmission of genetic characters. See? That is why. Carbohydrates, proteins, and these nucleic acids, which are considered as a chemical substance, form as the structural basis of the living organism. It forms what the structural basis of the living organism. So apart from that, we have minerals, vitamins, lipids. That is minerals and lipids. And these are also considered to be the micro biomolecules, or simple biomolecules we are calling. And these are called as complex biomolecules. Of Heavy biomolecules. Okay, now we'll start with the carbohydrates. I hope you can understand, isn't it? Now we'll start with biomolecules. We have carbohydrates. This carbohydrates, there are millions of carbohydrates, millions of carbohydrates have been reported so far, and most of the carbohydrates are obtained from the plants. Most of the carbohydrates are obtained from the plants. They are all basically plants. Obtained from the plants. So we will start with carbohydrates. So when you take this carbohydrates, when you take this carbohydrates, these carbohydrates, these carbohydrates, millions of carbohydrates have been imported so far. Millions of Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are represented by CH two O N. Millions of carbohydrates have been reported. These carbohydrates are 
with plant spores. These carbohydrates are plant spores. Example, you take cellulose, starch, cane sugar, gum, etc. They are all from the plant spores, isn't it? So, plant spores, they are okay from the plant spores. Generally, the carbohydrates are represented in the formula CHH2O when. So, that is why the carbohydrates are called as hydrates of carbon. Hydrates of hydrates of carbon. Carbohydrates are called as what? Hydrates of carbon. Hydrates of carbon. It is represented by CHH2O by hydrates of carbon. Say for example, you, don't, you take glucose. Glucose, isn't it? So that is C6H12O6. To check whether this formula fit into this order, that is C6H2O6. So now it fits, isn't it? C6H2O6 12 and O will be O1 into 6 will become 6. C6H12O6. Glucose. So this glucose fits into this formula. Say for example, take acetic acid. You take another example. What is the other example? Acetic acid. That is CH3, COOH. Take out this acetic acid. What will be the formula? This also becomes hydrates of carbon. CUH2O twice. C2 H2 into 4 hydrogen, so 3 plus 1, 4 hydrogen, and O will become 2. This is called as what? Hydrates of carbon. Though it is the hydrates of carbon, this acetic acid is not carbohydrate. It is not the carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is not the carbohydrate. It is not a carbohydrate. And similarly, man goes to take. What is the formula of mannose C6H12O5? This is a non sugar. Mannose is there, it is a non sugar. They call it as non sugar. So C6H12O5, which is a non sugar. Now we check whether it fits into this formula or not. C6H12O5. Obviously, it will not fit into this hydrates of carbon formula. Though it is not fitting into this formula, this mantos is nothing but it is a carbohydrate. Though the acetic acid suits into this formula, it may not be a carbohydrate. So what does it mean? So this hydrates of carbon have been in the expert mandatory condition. It is not a mandatory condition. Most of the carbohydrate exists in that representation that is C6H2O Y. CXH2O Y. That is the general representation. But some of the non-carbohydrates also fits in the formula and some of the carbohydrates also will not be fitting into this representation of the formula. Can you understand what I am doing? So what is the first point? It is a carbohydrate. We are calling it as what is a carbohydrate. So millions of carbohydrates have been reported so far. How many millions of carbohydrates have been represented so far? Isn't it? Now, So this is instead of mandos, you can write it as ramnos. Ramnos. C6H12O5, this is nothing but what? This is a ramnos. So what is that? Millions of carbohydrates have been reported. The plant source of cellulose, starch, cane sugar, gum, C6H2O5, this is nothing but it is an hydrates of carbon. Glucose, that is C6H12O6. Then, uh, then uh, the representation of hydrates of carbon they have given, that the hydrates of carbon also you have to match. Okay, now the next point. This carbohydrate we take, it is nothing but polyhydroxy aldehyde. Can I believe you this? Polyhydroxy aldehyde or keto. It is nothing but it is a polyhydroxy aldehyde. Otherwise, we can call it as what? We can call it as ketone. What is going to be polyhydroxy aldehyde or ketone? Polyhydroxy aldehyde means hydroxy means what? Functional to the aldehyde. Alcohol, isn't it? 
So the function group will be higher. Poly means what? More than three or more than four, isn't it? So more than tetra octa one, more than three OH groups will be present, or more than four OH groups will be present. So therefore, it is poly hydroxy. What is this aldehyde bond C is O? It's a function group. Similarly, ketone bond C bond double bond. So that means what? This carbohydrate will be comprised of two function groups. One is the functional groups, one is alcohol, the other one is aldehyde. All otherwise alcohol with ketone. So either you can have what? Alcohol plus aldehyde. We give it to the formation of one type of carbohydrate. In the class of we will study carbohydrate. And similarly, alcohol with bond C bond double bond, which is a ketone, it also forms the another type of carbohydrate. Another type of carbohydrates. Then the, these carbohydrates are optically active in nature. They are optically active in nature. What is meant by optically active? Optically active which exhibits mirror image. Which exhibits what? It exhibits mirror. Which exhibits mirror image. It exhibits mirror image. Apart the characteristic features in it, it will be having triode center. It will be having plus rotation. Or else it can have Levo rotation. Plus rotation can always be called as Levo rotation. Minus rotation is called as Levo rotation. Plus rotation is called as Dextro. Exorotation, then it is non superimposable on its mirror image. It exhibits what non superimposable on its mirror image. Then look at the species. So, structure for only will not understand. Structure will be drawing. So, generally, I tell you the characteristic features of carbohydrates and talking about. So, it is optically empty. So, plus rotation. And hydrolysis 
number of sugar units and hydrolysis, the carbohydrates are transferred into carbohydrates or transferred into monosaccharides. Oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. Okay, now see based on the number of sugar units. So monosaccharides, the monosaccharides we can understand. The monosaccharides will be having only one sugar unit. Since it is made up of only one sugar unit, it cannot undergo hydrolysis. Cannot undergo hydrolysis. So, therefore, we can call it as monosaccharides. So, far 20 monosaccharides have been reported, which is very essential for the body for the energy for eating energy. So, monosaccharides, if you think it is made up of only one glucose, it's a very best example glucose, allose sugar, one ketose, ketose sugar, fructose, it's a very best example, ribose sugar in DNA and RNA, acid, ribose sugar suppressor. So what is that? What is monosaccharide? Monosaccharide, which is comprising of only one sugar unit. Since it is made up of only one sugar unit, it cannot undergo further hydrolysis. So totally, how many sugar units? How many monosaccharides are uh, uh, very essential for the body for yielding the energy? Twenty monosaccharides are very essential for yielding the energy. Then next, uh, what is that? Examples for the monosaccharides are allose sugar. That is. Uh, and uh, allose sugar is glucose and ketose sugar is fructose and the ribose sugar. Now coming to oligosaccharides. This oligosaccharides will be comprising of 1 to 10 monosaccharide units. 1 to 10 sugar units. So disaccharides also will come under this oligosaccharide. But disaccharides means what? The disaccharides will be having two sugar units. For example, you take sucrose. Sucrose on hydrolysis. Sucrose on hydrolysis, it gives rise to the formation of glucose and fructose. Maltose again on hydrolysis, it gives rise to the formation of two molecules of glucose. So oligosaccharides will be comprising of 1 to 10 monosaccharide units. 1 to 10 monosaccharide units. Polysaccharides means what? The polysaccharides or the carbohydrates having more than 10 monosaccharide units. Having what? More than 10 monosaccharide units. Then they are calling it as polysaccharides. Then they are calling it as polysaccharides. Example starch is a polysaccharide unit. Cellulose is a gum. Gums is a polysaccharide unit. Understood? So based on the number of sugar units and based on the hydrolysis, the carbohydrates are classified into monosaccharides, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. Okay. Next one is, which is a very very important point in carbohydrates that is, the carbohydrates examination point of view even for the weak exams also, the carbohydrates are broadly classified into a reducing sugar and non-reducing sugar. It is classified into reducing sugar and non-reducing sugar. What is this reducing sugar? Reducing sugars are nothing but which will be having free functional groups. We will be having the free functional groups. Since it has a free functional groups, it will be getting reduced by the mild oxidizing agents. The mild oxidizing agents like oxidizing agents. We have the mild oxidizing agents like Right. Tolerance reagent and failing reagent. Tolerance reagent and failing reagent. What is tolerance reagent? Tolerance reagents are nothing but ammonia color. Silver nitrate solution. Ammonia color silver nitrate solution or the tolerance reagent. Failing reagents are nothing but which is a copper sulfate which is combined with sodium or potassium sodium or potassium 
dark red sodium and potassium tar so now see the reducing sugars they have a free functional groups since it is it has a free functional group it is can be easily reduced by the minor oxidation agents like tolerance reagents like the tolerance agents like ammonia and sugar nitrate solution then phase reagents are nothing but copper uh, sulfate is mixed with sodium and potassium dark red okay so those is what we are telling now copper uh, sulfate is mixed with sodium and potassium dark red non reducing so exactly
it is an exposed sugar since it exhibits optical activity and it is a monocyte it is a monocyte it is a monocyte correct now coming to the preparation now coming to the preparation first method of preparation it takes to close c12 h22 on acid hydrolysis on acid hydrolysis it gives us the formation of c6 h12 o6 plus c6 h12 o6 which is a glucose the other one is fructose glucose and Correct. First method. And now coming to the second method of preparation, it takes starch. That is C6H10O5. Ten times starch. Starch on hydrolysis is water. In the presence of an acid medium. 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 This is glucose. Okay, so there are two methods of preparation. The first method of preparation is by the hydrolysis of disaccharide. The sucrose. Second one is hydrolysis of the polysaccharide, which is the starch. This is the one, starch on hydrolysis. Can you understand? So glucose and fructose will be having same molecular formula, but in the structure there will be a variation. That when we are going for the structural elucidation, you will be Coming to understand. Okay, now glucose. So glucose are the two methods of preparation also available. Now, next one, we pass it on to the structural elucidation of glucose, which is very, 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 very important. Okay, okay. So I hope you can understand this, isn't it? So glucose is what? It is an alkyl sugar, and it is a polyhydroxy uh, group, and it has an exposed sugar optical activity, and then it is a Monosaccharide. Okay, it's a monosaccharide. Now we go for preparation also. Now we go for we go for the structural elucidation of the glucose. Structural. Six carbon atoms present. 
Okay, this is labeling. So aldehyde is present, alcohol is present. So that is why we call it as allosugar. Since it has aldehyde, first we call it aldehyde, and then it is polyhydroxy. Why we are calling this polyhydroxy? Because it is comprised of five OH group. So therefore we are calling it as polyhydroxy. So we have primary alcohol and we have secondary alcohol. How many primary alcohol? One primary alcohol. How many secondary alcohol? Four secondary alcohol. All together, how many OH groups are present? Five OH groups are present. What is the number of carbon atoms? One, C two, C one into four four. So four plus one, five plus one, six. Number of carbon atoms will be equal to six. Okay. Now, now this glucose on treatment with that of on treatment with that of. Treatment with the top hydrogen iodide and on being heated when it is being heated on treatment with the top hydrogen iodide and it is heated it reduces all the functional groups all the functional groups and forms yet it seen it is. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is it right? Now here, first carbon atom, three hydrogen. Here also three hydrogen. Then two, two, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is nothing but ten eggs here. So since listen carefully, this glucose when it is treated with the hydrogen ionide and accelerated heated to a temperature, it gives rise to the formation of ten eggs here. This indicates, this shows that this reaction shows like this. Example like this only they ask. What did you understand from this equation? What will happen when the glucose is heated with that of hydrogen iodide? Okay, this reaction implies or indicates. And I take it from the the glucose comprising of six carbon atom, which is arranged in a straight. Which is arranged in the straight chain. That is, it has no branches in it. Here, yeah. so our six carbon is there. Have you heard that? This reaction implies or indicates the first part, the first reaction. And that's all. Now, coming to the second reaction, glucose. That is, C H O bond C H O H four times bond C H two O H. This is Glucose, isn't it? This is glucose. So now it is also glucose. On treatment with that of hydroxyl amine, what is the formula? N H two O. When it is treated with hydroxyl amine, it undergoes nucleophilic substitution reaction. That was what nucleophilic substitution reaction. It undergoes nucleophilic substitution. It undergoes the nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, what is the nucleophilic substitution reaction? Is from here H and from here O will be getting the ring. And what is the product that we have? That is oxide formation CH double bond NOH bond CH OH four times bond CH two OH. This is called as oxide. So this reaction indicates. This reaction indicates, or this reaction implies. This reaction implies the presence of aldehyde group. Since 
aldehyde is present it undergoes a nucleophilic substitution reaction with hydroxylamine giving rise to the formation of the oxide giving rise to the formation of what giving rise to the formation of oxide so the first reaction with that of the hydrogen iodide the second reaction with that of the hydroxylamine and now coming to the third reaction the third reaction is with hydrogen cyanide we'll see the third reaction the reaction with hydrogen cyanide Primary alcoholic group. 
one alkene and one primary alcohol.
nose projection and the fistulous projection. We pass it up to the glucose to the next continuation for that, that is fissure projection. So the fissures projection will be happening represent the matter in a simplified way to keep this in your mind that is R L R R. Then it will become easy. It won't be about just like that and writing. So see, the global structure will write. C H O. First carbon will be adding hydrogen. Then C C. How many? Six. No, one, two, three, four, five, then six. Last carbon will be having C H two. Now let us see. This is first, second, third, fourth. This four one here is R L R R. So this is R. We will have O H. L second carbon O H. Third O H. Here four R O H. Remaining two satisfied valence of carbon hydrogen. Here hydrogen. Here hydrogen. Here Correct. This is the global structure. Fischer's projection is R U R R representation. This is for glucose. This is for glucose. So glucose has got what? Now spatial arrangement. Now let's talk about the spatial arrangement of the structure. Now what are the points that we have studied? Glucose has six carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six carbon. Which is arranged linearly. There is no branch. Yes. Now straight chain linear. It has been. It is an alkyl group. When it is treated with hydroxyl amine and hydroxyl cyanide, we came to know that it has got an alkyl group. Right? Correct. Then, what is the third point? Fourth point: oxidation. The oxidation of treatment with that of a bromine water and similarly an oxidation in the presence of concentrated nitric acid. Strong oxidizing agent. That also implies that the presence of aluminium and similarly presence of the primary alcohol group. Then. The last one is for acetylation reaction. Treatment with acetic acid nitride. It gave us the formation of glucose pentacetate. That reaction also implies for it has five O H groups. One, two, three, four, five O H groups. Isn't it? So presence of five O H groups. So now Fischer's projection and then the spatial arrangement. Now I am painting it with milder oxidizing agents like Tollens reagent. What will happen? It gave us the formation of Now I am. It is undergoing oxidation. It is undergoing what oxidation in the presence of milder oxidizing agent. Say for example, Tollens agent. So milder oxidizing agent. On the other hand, we have milder oxidizing agent. Then it gives us the formation of glucolytic acid. That is COOH. I will take the chemical compound and put COOH. Remaining one, two, three, four, five. Here it will be CH2OH. Again, what is the Symbolic representation R L R R. So R L R R R L R R. Remaining hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Correct now. Now for example, if I take for further oxidation, this primary alcohol also will be getting. This is called as what? Glucolytic acid. This on further oxidation, what will happen? Say COOH. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now here it becomes COOH. So that is the primary alcohol has got converted into carboxylic acid. That is COOH. Remaining what we have? Remaining what we have is RLRR. That is R is OH. L OH. R O H R means right O H. Now here it becomes what to satisfy the carbon balance. Now I add it. So this is called as what this is called. This is called as saccharic acid. This is called as what saccharic acid. Now the glucose is optically active. Have you ever done some? 
glucose is optically active for the activation. An example that is so Fisher's projection that I have represented now. Isn't it? Now so glucose this is five points which are ten, sixth the first and the sixth next the seventh one glucose is optically active. Optically active means it has what? Plus rotation. The other one is minus rotation. Plus rotation, the other one is minus rotation. What is the plus rotation? Plus rotation towards clockwise. Let's go rotation. What is the minus rotation? The minus rotation is nothing but Levo rotation. Levo rotation. Next rotation, Levo Present 
of oxide, then we call it as D plus glucose, which is a glycerol head. I don't know what it is, but this is wrong. And now here, which is OH has become left hand side, anti-clockwise, left hand side, that is L minus glucose. That is levorotation. Here it is dextro rotation. Here it is dextro rotation. Levo rotation. Here it is dextro dextro rotation. And this also we can call it as laser rod D I. It is laser rod D I. It is laser rod D I. See now, this becomes one, two, three, four, and five. So then the linkage is between first carbon to the fifth carbon. For this linkage, the oxygen is linked between first carbon and the fifth carbon. Oxygen linkage now structure side structure the higher ground. You can see now, whereas this is called as what? Alpha D 
plus glucose. And we have the representation of the glucose. R R L R. Okay. R R L R. We have to consider only these four carbon. R R L R. Only those we have to consider. Similarly, we have another representation. This is L R L R. For L R and L R, same as like that. One, two, three. Four, five, six. So the last one is CH two O H. Now what is the linkage actually? This is the linkage. Now L R. That is L R. L R. So now see H H H H. This is nothing but beta B plus glucose. So based on this cyclic structure, we can go for the pyranose ring structure. We go for what pyranose structure. Heterocyclic compound. Py pyron is an heterocyclic compound. Pyron is an heterocyclic compound. You go for you go for the pyron structure. Okay, so we go for this is carefully how I'm drawing the pyramidal structure. Pyramidal structure is I'm going to draw for alpha P plus glucose. So one, two, three, four, five. So let me see. For the pyramidal structure, then I have one, two, three, four, five. Like that, so pyramidal structure. So now you write the number. This becomes one. This becomes two. This becomes three. This becomes four. And this becomes five. Up above, first carbon, fifth carbon, all in link with oxygen. First carbon here, and the fifth carbon all in link with the oxygen. And now we start. Here we have CH two O H and H. Common. So no problem there. And then I need to see right hand side of the OH should be at the base. Left hand side of the it should be at the top. So now alpha D. Alpha D is what is this? R R L R. So first R at the base. Second carbon is base. Third carbon left. So therefore it is OH. Then fourth carbon R, which is at the base. Remaining we can write how we can write here H, here H, here H, here H. This is all for the glucose to pyrrole. Similarly, we can draw for this beta D plus glucose to no, projection. So, how we can draw? Isn't it? Now, same number is one, two, three, four, five. So here it will be having CH two OH, and here it will be having X. Now, 
a structure in the process. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, L, R, L, R, L, top OH, next one, R, base OH, then L, top OH, then R, base OH. So, remaining hydrogen for the balance, H, 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 H. This is called as beta B plus B. That's all. This is an idea. Last one is structure of the second point is it will not give, it will not answer for chips test. And 2 comma 4 D N P text because the pyramos structure is stable. This also the last D is more stable. This pyramos structure is more stable. So very difficult to break bond C H O. To break bond C H O. Chips test again is a test meant for identifying the presence of alcohol. It's a dye test. Chips dye test we are calling. So chips dye test. Due to presence of alcohol, we can confirm or use for the test. We are calling it as what? Chips test. We are calling it as chips test. Chips reagent we are telling. The chips reagent is nothing but sodium bisulfide with that of para rosanilin. A bit too low. So what is the chips reagent? Chips reagent or nothing but sodium hydrogen bisulfide, which is comprising the set of para rosanilin, which is and this DAT test is something that like it's a Bradley's region. Can I tell you what is Bradley's region? We call this Bradley's So in the DAT test of chips test form, we can use the presence of finally get confirmed under the target. In the Bradley's region, we can use the color of the answer to the chips region. We can use the lavender color, the bluish color. So, bluish color answer for the, for the aldehyde is answer. And the glucose aldehyde of the chest reagent to DNP test for you should have answer. Whereas, it will not give any answer. Which one the glucose? Though it is having the hydrogen, it will not answer for the uh, chips, phase, chips reagent as well as for the DNP. Why? Because of the pyrino structure. The pyrino structure of the aldehyde is very compactly placed, which is placed inside in the cyclic structure. So therefore, it is very difficult to break the bond formed between the carbon, rest of the carbon with that of the aldehyde group. So therefore, it will not give a test. See, aldehyde but aldehyde is there, is region. But we cannot predict where the aldehyde is present. So that is why the glucose will be may have a time in some second time. Glucose will not give any answer for the chips reagent. Chips reagent is nothing but sodium bisulfide, which is combined with that of para rosanilin, which is fat sensitive reagent. And the next one is 2,4-DNP. Dinitro paratolvin. So DNP test have been also known. Um, this DNP test can always be called as the Bradis reagent. Bradis reagent form the antigen. The glucose will not get the answer. Okay, so that's it. For the glucose now I have to make of the fructose structure which I will continue in the next class. Okay, now what are the concepts that we have studied? Carbohydrates are 10 points for the What are the characteristic features? Carbohydrates should look in another reasons and preparation of glucose, the structures of glucose are totally 10 points for the structure of glucose. Therefore, you can expect the questions from glucose, even for the neat examination, even for the board exam. So, study when to prepare for this. Understand? So, study, complete your classwork 
and you have to submit me on or before 27 okay thank you